as close as possible because I mean, it's it's not like when you really need everybody there to get your save your ass. Right. Uh, uh, you know, fuck if they're if they're fucking several parsecs away. Well, that just diddly fuck. Right. I mean, you know, we could we could have the shenanigans, but the shenanigans doesn't have the stealth jump and all the other right. cool stuff. And so it's a sore thumb. But yeah. the the thing that shenanigans has <clears throat> that. So it's got a slightly updated or upgraded um, maneuver drive, and I think it might have it might have an increased jump. Anyways, um, so it's essentially what they would call a fast trader, <clears throat> but it has the the conscious intelligence board, <clears throat> and really, shenanigans is sitting there right now. You don't have access to it because it is under a tarp um, on on the floating palace, which is um, a problem. But, but yeah. it, its real purpose is to sit there and um, it is your it is your ace in the hole. You know, uh, yeah. when things inevitably go tits up with this whole Kingdom of Drenax situation, that's your that's your boat out of here, and and nobody's gonna follow you. Nobody's gonna track you. Uh, the Imperium isn't gonna give a shit because nobody knows shenanigans. But uh, I think, like right now, our immediate thing is we're gonna go jack this ship, right? So we're yeah. Let's go ahead and bring it in, and uh, we can get to that. And there will be a couple what? of questions. So, uh, welcome to the Pirates of Drenex. We'll be picking up where we left off last week. These guys are on Steve. Um, if, you've, if you've been watching the last couple of episodes, uh, everything is all messed up. Um, King Oleb, uh, last they heard, King Oleb uh, was in a coma uh, in the Scholar's Tower on um, the Floating Palace. Lady Hill... Um, successfully pulled off a coup and you know, they have learned over the past couple of months uh, via news feeds is that um, essentially she is now claiming that uh, Oleb, you know, his dying wish was to marry her that uh, he professed his love for her so they are married which secures her seat on the throne as the new Empress of Sindal, uh, Queen of Drenax. And uh, Prince Herrick, meanwhile, uh, is on Thieve, trying to uh, build his own army um, with his limited funds. Um, so that's why, the, that's why our travelers are there. Um, they, they are um, essentially touching base with him and uh, seeing what is next. Now, what is next is that they have met up with uh, Prince Richter Grihai, <clears throat> who is another uh, person who claims lineage going back to the ancient uh, Empire of Sindal. Um, and he has not openly said anything about wanting to reform the Empire. Um, he wants to fortify... Uh, Specifically, he wants to fortify the Dust Belt, um, or the Drenax main, against Aslan incursion from Ihati. And there, he has a number of uh, small cells all across worlds in the in the Dust Belt, uh, known as the Grihai Movement. <clears throat> and that's kind of what they do: is that they are um, trying to stop Ihati incursions. Um, he is quick to point out that they are not racist, they just don't want to lose their homes to the Aslan. And so, that, that is mostly true. Uh, I mean, from your, from, from the Traveler's experience, um, that, there's nothing to really say that, that, that him stating that isn't true, that he's not racist. Certainly, some of the locals that are a part of the Grehive movement, that's certainly their thing. I mean, they probably have hoods and, and are willing yeah. to burn crosses the whole nine yards. So, there's that. Um, and then uh, uh, somebody 
has used a biological weapon. Now, of course, Prince Herrick would like to get his hands on this biological weapon, but he's also clearly aware that um, biologics are a, a two-edged sword, and um, you know if he does use it, uh, even people that are on his side are suddenly going to make him a pariah. Um, and the people that are on the other side that he used it against, he is going to become public enemy number one, and essentially every clan in the Herate would come after him for this uh, this biological weapon that turns Aslan into feral creatures. So he he would like to have it, but at the same time, it, it, it's kind of more trouble than it's worth which is the case with every biological weapon. And so <clears throat> he has ordered the travelers to in he doesn't trust Prince Richter. Um he has ordered uh, Herrick has ordered them to work with Richter um and to play nice and in the process bring him loot so that he can afford to um essentially purchase his army and navy to retake the the um, retake the floating palace and um, and keep an eye out for on all of this and so these guys are going after a ship known as the uh, principled profiteer that uh, is rumored it is a uh, a far trader that is rumored to be um, their crew is hired on to bring weapons and equipment to an Ihati uh, entrenchment on the planet Thebes. That's right. Yes, Thebes. And so um, that's where they're going next. They're also, as they're doing all of this, keeping their eye open for a subsidized, a modified, clearly it's modified subsidized merchant uh, called the Dawn Seeker that is, uh, that they believe is involved with this uh, um the placement of this uh, biological weapon uh, that they that they encountered on Paul. But before we get started, we'd like to thank a friend of the Greenwater Guild Hall. <clears throat> None of these are sponsorships or partnerships of any kind. They're just products that we really like. Tonight, we'd like to thank Fable Beard Company. Fable Beard Company makes beard bombs, butters, oils, uh, beard wash, beard conditioner. Um, they have spray on cologne, deodorants, um, all manner of things. And they, each of their fantasy, or I'm sorry, each of their scent profiles is a different fantasy character. And uh, like tonight, I am wearing uh, the hero. It's a beard bomb that uh, smells, has a light tobacco, a beer, like a pipe tobacco scent mixed with cologne. And it is, it is quite nice. But they have a ton of different scents. I'm sure you can find one that is suitable to you. Um, if you are a first-time purchaser, you can uh, go to the site. And uh, you, they've got a buy one, get one free option. So you can put two beard oils in your cart and use the code FIRST in all capital letters. And that will get you your second beard oil for free. And for the ladies, they have a new site. And I'm trying to remember the name of it now. Um, it's... Fable, uh, hold on, Fable Fashion, no, uh, da, da, da. that's funny. Um, they have a site for women, and they have um, like perfumes, body wash, uh, lotions, uh, things of that nature. And I, you know, it was on the tip of my tongue, and I cannot remember the name of it. It's brand new. It just came out, like, I want to say, like, last week. Um, you know what? I cannot find it. And of course, I didn't keep the um, keep the email that they had sent me because huh, that would make too much sense, right? But yeah, uh, search for that uh, if you are a lady, um, or or send them an email, fablebeardco.com. Just sh or, or they've got a 
a chat window there. You can just chat them and they will point you directly to that new site. If you're a fan of the channel and you want to help us out with subscriptions and bandwidth, things of that nature, we do have a merch shop uh, via Zazzle. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and uh, we've got t-shirts and buttons. In fact, one of the t-shirts and buttons is the pirate flag from Drinex, uh that we use tonight. Um, but yeah, we've got a, a blanket. We've got a beer stein. So yeah, if you want to help us out, uh, go pick yourself up a button and a t-shirt, and, and we appreciate you. So... <clears throat> Please notice my request for things to purchase before I leave. We leave here. Yes. So well, yeah. Um, cartridge laser carbine. I mean, I don't see why not. Let me. Where's my weaponry? My weaponry. It's on page one fifty three on the twenty three thirty. 2023 update. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, I don't have a problem with that. Uh, so for a cartridge laser carbine, you'd be looking at a tech level 11. Well, there's either a 10 or a 12 here. So I guess a 10. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, laser carbine oh, is showing. No, yeah, 10 or 12. Or 12. It's showing TL9 or 11 on the chart. Where? On, on page 153. No, that's the laser carbine, not the cartridge laser carbine. Oh, I'm sorry. Cartridge laser. Yeah, so I see what you're saying. Yes. I don't have a back. That way I don't have a pack on my back. Right, right, right. Um, yeah, I don't see why not. That All of this would be available on Thief. Um, yeah, I have a bunch of cargo to sell too. I've got like fifty tons of uh, industrial industrial robot yes parts. Yes, you do. I think their base price is four hundred k, if I'm not mistaken. Right. Let me take a look here. Oh boy, I got a wafer to pirate, pirate sh pilot ships to go along with my wafer for astro and a wafer for for navigation. <laughs> Ask if we need to split ships. At least I can do something. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't have a problem with any of that stuff that you want to purchase. That would all be available here on Thieve. Uh, let me let's see here. Industrial. Um, Keith was wondering if we should all get a disguise not if we're gonna because we might end up going on a heist type of mission in time soon. That might not be a bad idea. I don't even know what they are. Oh, the are disguise net? Yeah. Oh, oh, net. Oh, I thought you said nut. I was like, what the hell is that? Okay, I've heard of the disguise the camel net. net. Oh, yeah. My my disguise <laughs> net is is I've already got one. So yeah, you I have one. Yeah, it's definitely not a nut. That doesn't make any sense. Get the All right. get the whole body, the TL twelve, with the holographic <laughs> transformation. It's on page eighty two of the Central Supply Catalog. I I suggest you get that. The uh, I also suggest that uh, people while you're here, if you take the time to get ion shielding on your combat power armor, so my EMP grenades don't fuck with your shit. Mm, okay. That is also a good idea if you're doing cybernetics to pay to get that ion shielding. That's true. Okay. Just, um, just saying. Thank you. I thought I wasn't gonna have to buy anything. So this. Oh is, yeah. So, uh, so Tang. <coughs> yes, sir. Excuse me. Um. So Thief is a high tech world, so it is a plus one to your sale. All right. Uh, hold on here. I have a. Uh... Oops. I have broker two, and I'm gonna I'm gonna come in as Ting Hansen. So I'll get I'll get plus four, and then I'll get that extra plus one. You said so that's plus five to the roll right now. Yeah. Uh... Mm -hmm. 
go ahead and make your roll. All right. Well, it could have been better, but 10, still not bad. Wow. Okay. So you will get uh, 90% of the value. Which is 400K uh, per ton. So 400K per ton at 50 tons. And then I guess what? Like multiply by 0. 0.9? Yeah. It's hard to complain about a loss when you uh, got yeah, the Yeah, you shit didn't pay for anything. Your, so your, that uh, is 18 mega credits. Is that at the fucking 90% then? Yes. 18 mega credits, you said? Yes. That all goes to Captain Beth for her budgeting and shit purposes because we're starting to size. She's... I think you're going to make us do some fucking bookkeeping work and stuff for money. Right. So, yeah. um, <laughs> right. But 18 mega credits is a nice fucking sale. Yeah. That's, I, absolutely. yeah. that's a nice chunk no. of change. Yeah. I expect a metal presentation at some time. <laughs> <laughs> so. We're going to have to start taping them to the back of you and shit. Man. Hell yeah, man. <laughs> I went to military school when I was in high school, man, and and man, you could get medals for boxing and track and res. I mean, it you get medals all over if you're half ass athletic. You know, you could fuck around and at least get third place. But we'd be walking with our class A dress uniforms and shit, and we'd just jingle, 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 motherfuckers. I'd have I had three rows of medals that went down past my webbing and shit, and and I was like. I, they'd be like, yeah, man, you're going to come do this event, you get a medal. And I go, no, man, I don't want any more motherfucking medals. Because I don't want to uniform. They should have let you consolidate them into like a giant one. That would well, cool. you could get just the, a big metal like Flavor Flav's cloth. Yeah, that's exactly what I was well, thinking. You can, you can take the ribbons off of the the bars, you know, the bar racks will go four and sometimes five wide. Right. And you can slide those ribbons off and just remove the backing of the metal and slide the metal on a bar. Right. So now it's, it's, so you can, you can just hit that row, but then each row has to be evenly spaced. So if you have all your shit all on bars and quickly going on and then you get one more, now what the fuck do you do? You got one more. You have to reconfigure your whole fucking thing all because you fucking, you know, somebody recognized that you pick up some fucking trash on the side of the road. We weren't really in the military, man. You know, who gives a fuck if I leave this gay ass metal at home? You know, I, if it's, it's got to look cool. No plain bullshit. Fucking cool looking metals made the cut. If you had a plane shit, I tried to avoid getting rewarded. It was, it was just too much of a penny. <laughs> so, they really should have given out a medal for arranging the medals. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, what has, has transpired? Uh, so, all of the ships that are currently on loan to Tech World um, are that are basically they are listed as doing uh, picket duty, uh, they are in defense of Tech World. Uh, during that whole thing, you did lose, uh, you lost two ships, uh, or I'm sorry, you lost three ships. You lost the Magnetite, which is a fiery class gunship. You lost uh, Dundalin's Pride, which is a, a, a Type J Seeker mining ship. And the Pelzentin Delta, which was a Type A free trader. Um, aside from that, uh, the ships that are left is the Martinique, the Infernus Butler, Free Sparrow, Sonson's Pride, Princely Challenger, Suskahalen, the Obi-Wan Jabrobi, which is really Sam's Leaky Bucket, and the Thermasis, um, which comes to uh, that Tech World is paying those crews 309,000 credits per month uh, over the course of the uh, past year. Uh, Tech World has paid them 3,708,000 credits total. The ships that are left are basically all of the Sandalian ships. There's the Osiris, the Anubis, and now there's Scout's Honor and the Mars. 
and but the scouts honor and the mars are new so you're gonna have to pay hiring fees uh to bring those crews on which will come to eighty thousand credits so if you wanted to deduct eighty thousand credits they are now aboard i would really like to eat the cost of staffing and keeping these guys going even if we're not gonna pay them a loot share you know well i mean you but can, if we're gonna I mean, pay them a loot share, pirating with you, they you kind of yeah. have to pay them a loot share. I mean that yeah. that is standard procedure. Um, each essentially each crew member gets one share. The captain gets five, um, but that is for your ship. Um, mm -hmm. Those additional ships, those crews are each person is worth uh, one share. Now what we discussed was. Um, <clears throat> was like 10% of, after yeah. everything said and done, 10% off the top of that to those crews, that would cover it. Um, so uh, for Osiris and Anubis over the course of the last year comes to 984,000 credits. So just take off a mill. Yeah, if you take off a mill, that'll cover their share too. From the 18 mega credits just now? That yeah, I just gave that. you 18, yeah. <laughs> Okay. Oh, uh, yeah. And then, also, and I, oh, I'm okay. sorry. Go ahead. There's a typo on the Obi Wan Jabroni. Oh, is there? Um, yeah. That's oh, all. yes, there is. Oh, sorry. I, oh, could, yeah. I couldn't if, figure out why we were pronouncing it differently. And then I looked at the sheet and I'm like, oh, on the sheet it says Jabroni. Yes, you are Found correct. Um, also, uh, I think we were going to request a uh, a pirate lord meeting to try to oh, find yeah. out what's up with fucking old kitty cat hunter. So he might be the guy behind the biological weapon. Really, no, that it would be worse than it is. Yeah. It? So yeah. yeah. So moving forward, um, these four ships: Osiris, Anubis, Scouts, Honors, and Mars will run you 162,000 credits per month. And then you can, uh, whatever you pirate, whatever you get from that booty, um, if you want to just skim 10% off each time, those crews will be perfectly happy with that. That sounds pretty reasonable. I mean, there's there's a lot of use in them. So, I mean, there's 10% yeah. that's coming off for Prince Herrick. There's 10% that would go to your, your pirates. Which, I mean, that's the entire point reason for being a pirate. If they wanted to just, you know, be a wage slave, <laughs> they'd, they'd be working for a, a, a trader captain or a luxury liner. It's, yeah, it's important that uh, those Other guys be healthy. Them? Yeah, because when we need them, I mean, we really want them there to perform or we're wasting a lot of time doing bookkeeping. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, 162000 a month uh, comes right off of that. Now, of course, that does not – that is just the cost of crews. That, that is not – I haven't calculated into that <clears throat> maintenance fees. And, of course, that doesn't calculate in docking fees and refueling fees because that's going to change almost daily. It, it, it changes almost every time you go to port. So. No. Well, I mean, if we need to do maintenance upkeep and all that shit, I mean, now now would be a good time. Right. And so it, with uh, for maintenance for you guys, let me find that book. So for the three Harriers. The two of them shouldn't need maintenance. They're fresh That's off right. the they're, line. They're, they're fresh off the line. So, yeah, for for Anubis, you are looking at uh, 28630 per month. And it really has not – I mean, I'm going to say that it has been, but it really hasn't been maintained every month. But let's see, 28630 – well, I mean, if she dropped like half a million, so, so would that cover all that? Well, it's three hundred and forty-three thousand five hundred and eighty-four for the past year. All right, that's for the Anubis. That's for the Anubis. 
And how much for the Osiris? The Osiris. Hold on here. You said 300 and what? Uh, shit. Hold on. 347K, wasn't it, roughly? 340,000. Here, I'll type it in. 340, All right. 320. All right. Yeah. And then for the Osiris. It will be where is my starship for the reach or its command vessel. It's going to be slightly more expensive. So it is thirty four thousand eight hundred and seventy three point three per month for the past year. That comes to. Four hundred eighteen thousand four hundred and seventy nine point six credits. All right, well, we need to we need to pay That's that, like I guess. A little more than eight hundred thousand altogether. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I can pay that out on what you just got as well. Cool. And another thing I want to try to do and suggest is I would like to get the Osiris Ion shielding on its core systems so people don't hit us with an Ion cannon to fuck us up. So, okay. Uh, you want Ion shielding, you said? Right. I like, you know... It doesn't necessarily have to do the whole ship and everything, but I mean, I'd like to, I'd like to get the power core done, the weapon systems, the the M drive, uh, and the ship's computer. Uh, I'd I'd like to get all those beefed up. So if we get hit, those those systems will be you know immune, and and we can still be in the fight. So to do that though, um, you're looking at dry dock time. Uh, shit. Do you know what page that's on uh, in Highguard? Oh, no. Uh, uh I mean, I just sat here and thought, wow, we should really get that if we're sitting here doing all this, or at least, you know, see what the price tag is. Radiation uh, sh shielding. That's the next radiation. Oh, oh, I I want this exact search. I'll just, again, I'll just search for ion. <clears throat> oh my god, this is fucking irritating. I want I'm this sorry. exact search. No, I want that word. Full word. Okay, so you want um, so for the computer you could go you you could add slash FIB, which would be hardened systems. <coughs> Those options can be applied to the same computer by doubling its cost. Oh no. It, so it's fifty percent more. The computer system, oh, shit. Uh, and you're doing this for Osiris, right? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. I'm just, you know, trying to find out what kind of price range. Really, if you could just give a ball figure uh, I, and I, a guess, I, I cannot. Uh, yeah, so there you all, go. Per, it's all percentage. Uh, so yeah. the computer here is slash. Uh, this might be an extremely expensive five. undertaking. Might not be worth it. Computer thirty. Okay, so we're looking at time. So you're looking at 15 million to do hardened systems for the computers? Oh. 
That seems well, kind of pricey to me. <laughs> yeah, it's fifty percent of the of the cost yeah. of the computer. Is uh, that something to would... dream for? You know. And then uh, let's see. That's an ion cannon that you already have. I don't know. It was just a thought. I, I don't know if anyone's really going to use that or it's really worth getting in there. I might be overthinking. And and that's 15 million credits. I mean, that eats up everything that I, we just pirated off those fucking cash cow schmucks. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's a little much. I think we should wait on it. Right. Well, I mean, you know. If, it's good to know how much it costs, though. Yeah, now we know basically uh, it's a big dry dock time. We can get our maintenance cleaned up and do so, our hiring. So, es so essentially, you can do that uh, hardened system for mm -hmm. any component that draws uh, power from the power plant, and it's all it is is it's plus fifty percent to the cost of that okay. particular item. Um, but there's no. I'm not right. seeing Prices. any actual specific armor. Uh, yeah. Well, the hardened uh, that that kind of that kind of does yeah. it right there. Yeah. yeah. You just got to go system by system and reinforce shit, which would probably be cheaper than trying to do the whole fucking ship. You know. Well, if but, you're going I system mean, I by, guess... I mean, each each one of those that's half the cost, or that's fifty percent of the cost of the entire system that you're hardening. Yeah. So. Yeah, that can get expensive, like, really quick. Yeah. So, I mean, God, you almost just have to fucking take half the ship's cost and just say, bam, do the whole fucking thing and shut the fuck up. Yeah, right, right. And it's one of those things that, like I said, you're talking about uh, sig significant dry dock time. Um, I don't know if we have that right now. It seems like things are starting to heat up, and that's why I'm starting actually kind of paranoid and, and really suggesting that we roll as a fleet. So the next question that I have <clears throat> is that are you going to <clears throat> excuse me, this cold is killing me. So are you going to take, are you going to have all three of the Harriers jump with you? Because And the reason I ask is that the Rorix is really designed so that it can um, it can service two True. Harriers. Yeah, we can really only carry two. What would we do with the third? Well, though? I mean, you're not. Yeah. So I mean, thing. yeah, you guys have used it to to um essentially dumping your your jump to jump one, but that's not really um that's not really the purpose of those of those docking points. The, the the purpose of those docking points is really to use the unrep system so that yeah. you can you're, you're basically a command and resupply station that those harriers can dock with you and you know use the unrep system to quickly resupply them and then they leave and go go forth and do more commerce rating. You you guys have been doing, you know, before you had the Rorix, you guys were were doing fine just doing using it like a normal ship so i mean it's entirely up to you if you want to send one of those harriers out to to do exactly that to go harass um shipping and uh and take two of them with you or you can take all three of them i don't know how how big of a presence do you want to suddenly generate when you pop into a system because as i was telling wes before we got started you guys popping in with a Rorik, uh, Sindalian Rorix command vessel and three Sindalian Harrier class commerce raiders. When they when you are finally noticed, it's going to generate a lot of threat. Well, not necessarily a lot of threat. Well, yeah, it'll generate a lot of threat, but it's also going to generate a lot of um, pants shitting. They are going to be shitting their pants because this is that's not typical pirate behavior. That's that's a war force. Yeah. Well, I mean, things are starting to look like a war force. Did you hear about that big fleet that was going through and shit? I mean, right. uh, yeah. everybody. I don't want. I don't want to take a seventy-five thousand ton 
cruiser and well neither do i but if i gotta send (laughs) two fucking harriers to fucking distract it while i get away and then we lose those two harriers i'm fine with that well and i I mean uh, yeah i mean you're not gonna be taking on the that imperial that particular imperial Uh, fleet necessarily uh, but um it you, also you de- look a lot worse than your average pirates that show up. Sure. It, it also depends on exactly what we do. And are, do we give a fuck about going and stopping these Aslan that wrecked on this place? You know, do we want to support racist dude? Do we really give a fuck what this prince that we've been fucking rescuing has to tell us to do? Is that prince really in charge of us? I I feel like he's competent enough, and he's if we could reinstall him in Drynax, we could have we could go back there, which would be yeah. a plus. Right. There's the so, scholars' tower and there's other good things about. So him. so you think we should go and do this, and then and then I mean, you see what happens. Yeah, just like we have to decide how many Harriers to bring. Um, right, we can take two Harriers and send, uh, send any one of the three really off on some kind of mission. Uh, yeah, we, we could can... send one of them to to, to go um, hang out, pirate in some area if we want, or we could. Uh, um, I don't know what else to make them do. Yeah. <laughs> that's what our guys do. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Well, yeah, I mean, maybe we could we could kind we of... could we could hunt pirates. I mean, there's that's one thing about that is is you can you can take the pirate ship and no one calls you a thief. True. Yeah, that's that's true. Yeah, if you're and, pretending and to be would... pr- protecting everybody. Mm-hmm. I just wonder if we well, bring all the Harriers if we're putting all our eggs in one basket. You know what I mean? Yeah. So much could go wrong. Well, this, this, yeah, yeah. I mean, essentially, you could send out all three of those Harriers, and and triple your your pirating intake. Can can we have a system map? Uh, maybe. Please. I got a map of the yeah. Dust Belt. Yeah, that's fine. Just kind of the general area on where we're at and where we're going is is the, the idea. See, we're at, we're here, right? Yeah. And this, we're headed. This whole line is the is the Sindalian Main. This is the Dust Belt. Yeah. And so this the Dust Belt, the Sindalian Main is primarily, um, you know, this is where the main shipping comes in from. Um, really from the from the Imperium because it comes down from Rilgar uh, makes the the uh, what three parsec jump hopefully uh, or it comes from over in the Tech World region and moves up this main towards the Florian League or it moves down into the Aslan Harade so. You know, this this main is where the bulk of your pirating activity is going to take place. That and probably Borderlands subsector. Well, then that fits in perfectly. We can all go to Thebus right here, which is the mission, right? We can take everybody there. And then once we hit there, you know, we might use our guys to sneak around if we need to locate ships in the sector. But then after that, we can, you know, we can send them off to send them off to pirate yeah go pirate hunting between uh aces and tktk uh because there's favor to be earned at tier uh through through i mean we've gotten leads about fucking tier needs help they're fucking got pirate issues oh yeah tears well it's not necessarily just pirate issues tears got all sorts of problems um right but that's that's a I mean, that's a class A starport right there in the center of the Dust Belt that we're trying to... I mean, this whole thing is centered around there. Essentially, everybody hates Tyr because Tyr has... At at one point, um, Tyr kind of became a bunch of jerks and tried to annex a bunch of these planets. So Asus has problems with Tyr. And uh, even uh, at one point, Dostoevsky had problems with Tyr. 
we could also yeah we could also Way over there yeah yeah, they, yeah in fact tyr invaded dostoevsky and the population that is on dostoevsky um they are still this happened probably a couple hundred years ago but they're still pissed off at tyr even though they so dostoevsky hired a bunch of aslan uh, glorious empire mercenaries and kicked their their shit off of their planet asus did the same thing but both asus and dostoevsky are still butthurt over it because uh, essentially, a lot of their artifacts, uh, you know, ancient monuments, um, artwork, things of that nature, Tyr all took back, and it's still sitting in the palace on Tyr, even though they kicked Tyr off the planet. And Dostoevsky's not quite so butthurt over it, because now there's a Imperial research base there, um, but Asus is really pissed off at Tyr. To this day, but they, there's just nothing that they can really do about it. Asus has a bigger problem in that those those Aslan mercenaries that they hired, their deal with them was to essentially give them land on Asus, and these assholes have done that. They have taken over much of the planet, so Asus is essentially um, they they're essentially overrun with Aslan. We could we could do that. We could send. We have a whole bunch of loot stored on Borite that needs to be sold. Is that correct? There is loot on, on your station on Borite. You have not been to Borite in quite some time. Long time, yeah. Okay, we where's, should send somebody to do that. Um. Yeah. yeah, so, I mean, we could all take the the little bit. We could all jump together, and then, at, you know, what well, we're going to jump and – is there a secret refueling place here? Yeah, yeah. There's a secret refueling outpost here. That uh, here, so okay. We could send yeah. one to Borite. All right, there. yeah. We'll send. And then we'll go send the other way. One of them to Borite, and the rest of us will go to Thebes. That's right. Like plan. Yeah, yeah, I like that plan. May I ask uh, where Borite is? Right here. Oh, okay. Some of us are blind. Uh, yeah, we have a we have a base there, though. I mean, so I I guess yeah. There's that's our plan. So they have, so Borite has a gas giant that is way out at the edge of the system, kind of like Pluto, and there's this gas giant that's all the way out there. It, it is a long way, like something like three four days to go from the the gas giant at maximum at their ship's maximum burn to get to the main world. So it's way the f out there. Around this this uh, gas giant, they found an old Sindalian space station, basically a listening post, um, refueling station kind of thing that was in a decaying orbit. And, you know, some shit and some things happened, and they took it over. They ended up taking it over once they cleared it out. And they, ha they had spent some, t some time and money um, basically fixing the place up, uh, putting in, you know, maneuvering thrusters so that they could do, st or station keeping thrusters. Um, the pirates that were there were using it to essentially as a refueling outpost, so they, they do have drones that can be used to go and collect fuel. There are some fuel, some floating, uh, you know, fuel tanks that are floating out there, and um, <clears throat> and they were basically just store using it to store booty that hadn't been fenced yet. But then all of the sh they all the pirates left to go protect tech world and uh all this stuff is still sitting there last yeah. time you heard yeah so then we need to send uh we'll send the mars to borite assess the station uh and and on we're gonna make sure on the mars let me bring that up now can you uh give me uh, one of those the the battle sisters. Act. No. Oh, the, uh, the can sister's you give name. Me, yeah, can you give me one of them, please? It Which is... one, the pilot or the navigator? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. Yeah, there's an astrogator and there is a pilot. Uh, which one is which? Let's see. Let's here. do the astrogator. Yeah. So that's Elizabeth Steinfor is the astrogator and Una uh, Steinfor is the pilot. 
All right. So can you spell the astrogator, please? Uh, Elizabeth. And the last Elizabeth. name. Last name is, well, here, I'll just type it out. And I have to look, too. How do you spell her last name? Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're going to send Elizabeth as the astrogator for the Mars. Okay. Yeah. Say goodbye, sis. Yeah. She's on the roster now. You know, at some point I'll get her stats and skill set or whatever. But uh, as of as of now, we've officially split the sisters up uh, from the Cash Cow group. So that 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 solves that problem. So far, yeah. And then we're so we're gonna go to this place, and then what are we going back to Thieve? Is that what we're doing? You, it, I suppose so. Maybe you don't know. Um, it, you know. So Herrick wants you to work with. Um, <clears throat> he wants you to work with um, Prince Richter, play nice, and so it really is going to depend on where that takes you, because Herrick's idea is, you know, play nice with him, make sure he doesn't get whatever this biological weapon is. We don't want that. Um, <laughs> and and the the deal that you have with Richter is Richter's like, I don't give a shit what you do with it. With with the arms and equipment that you you find, you can take them and sell them. You can Prince Eric would be perfectly happy accepting any weapons and equipment so that he can outfit his army that he's building. That's fine too. Um, either way, cash or or equipment, it doesn't. It, it's good either way. But you get to keep that and do what you want with it. I mean, if we take those weapons and give them back to Prince, we could meet the Mars back at Thieve. Possibly. Right? I have a feeling this is going to roll into something else, but we'll see. <laughs> so do you want us to tell the the Mars to to do what? To to go to Thebes? Wait, I thought, the Mar I thought the Mars was going to Borite. It's going to yeah. go to Borite, but then after it goes there and assess the situation, I'm trying to figure out where should I tell the damn thing to go. Yeah, shouldn't it go to Thieve to like bring back whatever money or goods? Fair enough. Then begin. Uh, we're gonna make sure that we have a purser type on on that ship. Sure. And and their their immediate duty will be to sell all the loot and bore right uh, at Thieve, and uh, and then when you finally sell out of everything. Wait for us at the. So you're gonna want a crew member of uh, purser on there that's gonna have broker as a skill. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, um, we will we will make sure that happens. <laughs> I haven't filled out this ship yet, but we're stipulating now that one of these people supposedly, when we look at their resume, right, like, uh, fuck around and it could be uh. It could be Denedict Rapp, the the pallet, or it could be the the captain there. Actually, has the however, purser skill. Yeah, yeah. However, you, however you guys set that up, I know that you're you're rolling up uh, characters for. Yeah, characters. so I will make sure that the Mars has a purser, and next week or so, I will have all of them kind of detailed. If you're them. running, if you're if you're hard pressed for names, um, in the Pirates of Draenex, the first book. Uh huh. Um under i think it's in the chapter called a pirate's life for, it might be pirate's life for me right. um there is a, a d66 chart you could just randomly roll pirate names and just i did bang out your crew uh, I, I do have a guy named mohammed lee <laughs> nice nice on anubis nice Ooh. yeah so i mean i don't have him all ironed out yet because i'm still trying to figure out who exactly we have already locked in on that Crew. So he's we have like a three. Well, no, Muhammad and Lee are the two most common first and last names. And you are so just one guy being called Muhammad Lee is like being John Doe. I so, mean, uh, so 
Uh, Gregor, you can purchase basically everything that you want off of your list. There are two grenades of each type available. Okay. Um, for the um, for the disguise nets. Oh, look at that! You're, look how lucky you are. There's four disguise nets available for purchase, so you can go ahead and buy those directly at price out of the um, uh, Central Supply Catalog Update 2023. Awesome. Um, I'll get three of them for us. Um, three hundred k all together for that, right? Well, uh, that's a good. That is a good question. You know, I'm not sure. Does this have That's what text? I got told here. Yes, it does. I want to outfit the... Uh... It's on page 82. We, we don't have the copy of that right now. So. Uh, it is... So, are you getting the head or whole body? Whole body. So oh, yeah, God. they're a hundred. They're a hundred, hundred k each. Gotta go full body. And they are. Tech Can we level get level. headless? If yeah. we're gonna go heist or something. Well, Why I mean, would this, we just get the the whole, This is just a. a oh, okay. A so the whole body. body includes your head. All right. For some reason, yeah. I thought it didn't. And whatever. Yeah. It's, <laughs> a, it's a. It's ignore me. <laughs> It's basically like a hair net that you wear <laughs> all over your whole body that does holographic projections to make you look. See, I thought it was like two pieces. Like you would get I the think, whole body I one if you right. wanted to disguise something no, about your physical. You're right. If you want to do, if you want to do uh, head and body, it was 120k. Oh. Okay. All right. I'll buy four of the face ones then, so that everybody is okay. covered. So that's 80 more. Yeah, I had to read the actual description test, uh, text, and it, yeah, it's. Well, then I'm okay. gonna buy a I'm gonna buy a headpiece real quick. No, she no, just, I bought one. Oh, I, she just yeah, bought four of them, so. Okay, well, yeah, then I'll take a headpiece because I I've kind of been using it without having it. Yeah, I I <laughs> thought I thought body kind of covered the whole thing, but no, you are, sure, you yeah. are correct. But yeah, that's that's Ooh. cool. I cost us more money. <laughs> so the the batteries on those can be used for it'll allow you to keep that disguise for an entire day awesome which i mean that's that's, long, uh, that, that's, that's a good battery nice. i mean yeah. Yeah. just gotta recharge it right right uh, yeah. it, it, it even has wireless recharging <laughs> wow wonder what that key charger looks like <laughs> it's weird Mine now has solar panels. <laughs> yeah. And then where are we going to have a uh, wanting to sit down with the other pirate lords? Um, I'm not that nervous, uh, but we could. You want to talk about Peter Bayless? Yeah, I <laughs> want to find out what's up with him. I mean, if he's lurking about it. He He's would have attacked us by now. That's what I feel uh, like. Did, but, we didn't yeah. see any of his ships when we came through, did we? Uh, no. We uh, you mean in Thief? No. And you right. didn't see any of them on your trip f from Tech World to here. So. <clears throat> All right. So you you are um, I mean you heard rumors that his his ships are still out there and they're still flying yeah. their colors. But no word of him. Um, you can anybody who wants to try to find information on him on Thieve, you can make a um, a Streetwise plus intellect check, or or Streetwise plus social check. Well, I'll have a your, little bit of that. Your social definitely counts here. I got eleven. Oh, good. I got a ten. Yeah. Okay. Social. Yeah. Yeah. Love social. I hate it. <laughs> well, let's see. Uh, was, we, I did a whole bunch of crazy shit, and my social started going up. And, so, <laughs> so Gregor, your social can go up one. I don't know if that'll help you. 
Oh no. He went away. Oh, Damn. <laughs> he got too popular he, and he rolled yeah. he rolled so bad that he disconnected. He says, I am done with you guys now that I got popular. <laughs> <laughs> I'm rolling with the cooler crew. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, if we could just do this so we just do this poking around probably so, serves any the same thing as if a big meeting. We don't need to do a meeting, probably not. Unless they call me off. So, so yeah, your social can go up one. Um, that's from uh, the um, the recognition that you got from Prince Eric. So that gives me a social of of five. So you're at minus one. Wow. You know what? I you can make, go ahead and make your social six. You're at plus zero. You've you've been pirating with these guys enough. I mean, you're you're known. And and definitely um, that whole um, the raid on the prison on Marduk definitely would have some effect. So, you guys, uh, your your contacts on the street, uh, basically. <clears throat> the word on the street is that uh, um, he vanished. Yeah, yeah, I didn't get anything. I got a three. Okay. <laughs> uh, Peter, Peter Bayless vanished. Um, there are, so um, Ting and Keith, uh, Ting, you hear uh, that he vanished. Most of the people that you talk to think that um, he probably pissed off an Aslan and and got the the just rewards um, that that uh, he so deserved. <clears throat> Keith, you hear a rumor on the street <clears throat> that um, he he was uh, he was betrayed. Oh. That's spicy. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, I wonder who did that. Yeah. <laughs> Wasn't me. That's why I didn't want to have the pirate lord meeting so much because they're going to go, why? Yeah, why <laughs> are you <laughs> so true? <curious? Hey, yeah, <laughs> you going to have to pass some deception checks. <laughs> well, the pirate, well, I, mean, I don't mind a lot. The pirate lords aren't going to care so much about that um, because shit, you're pirates. Shit happens. Um, I mean, Admiral Darokin would frown on it, but on the flip side, you've got Hurl Irontooth, who is an Aslan pirate, who hated Peter Velas's guts. Peter Velas was just a thorn in his side constantly. So Hurl, I mean, if it were to come out that you were the ones that screwed him, um, Hurl Irontooth might actually... You might gain favor with him. Oh, well, let's keep that in our back pocket for later, then, if we ever need some shit. But, I mean, Hurl Irontooth really is just as... is Your experience with him is just as bad as Peter Velas. Peter Velas was psychotic in that he wanted to basically take on the entire Aslan Harate in four ships. Hurl Irontooth um, is basically... His real goal... Ultimately, because he's an Aslan, um, is he wants land. And that's one thing being a pirate has not gotten him. And, um, you know, he he's all nearly psychotic um, in he'll he'll fight anybody. He'll fight anything almost in a blind rage fury. Um, Hurl Iron Tooth is a loose cannon. Um, so he, him and Peter Velas are almost the same. They're like two sides of the same coin. Um, Hurl Irontooth, of course, has the flip side in that um, Aslan, he he has no honor as far as Aslan are concerned. He's the, the lowest of the low. Well, Even the glorious... Hopefully we don't have to... Him. Yeah, hopefully we don't have to mess with him at all, but if, and if we need to get favor somehow... Yeah, you can keep that in your back pocket. 
I mean, sure. <laughs> that gives you two pieces of information. Um, the the other one, of course, being that uh, there that Peter Valus told you, uh, or rather, he told one of his uh, lieutenants that you ended up trying to rescue in carbon freeze floating around um, Torpal, um, that on Admiral Dorokin's flagship, in, stored in a computer, is proof that Dorokin is actually a spy. He's working, he's still working for Imperial Intelligence. Now, you don't have any, you've, you've never firmed that up, you have no real proof that that's true, but, uh, um, he seems to have an awful lot of contacts. Yeah, it seems plausible. Yeah. Well, uh, does he have any uh, contacts on any rogue pirate organizations that aren't recognized by Thieve? I mean, there's a lot of pirate organizations that aren't recognized. I mean... I guess recognize... we had to get pretty good at pirating before we found Thieve. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean um, recognize Thieve isn't a a union or a government of any kind. It is, it is a hive of scum and villainy run by pirates. Yeah, uh, but they don't. They right. don't. You know, pirates don't have to be recognized by Thieve to be pirates. Sure, sure. Well, I was trying to get some that weren't pirate lords that we could prey upon. We could find locations but we're gonna find them anyway it'll be okay right right i mean that's part of your gig is basically for drinax you you've been selling protection services back to these worlds like oh well you know if, if you join drinax look how much less piracy you have and then yeah. you just stop pirating in that region and you you tell the other pirates that are in that region to kindly piss off or you'll Blast them with a particle bar bat. Yeah. All right. Are we ready to roll out then? I guess so. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, Captain Beth, go ahead and make your astrogation check. Oh, am I doing that now? Or whoever's making the astrogation check. I am doing the astrogation. Yeah. I got a one. Yeah, I have three. Yeah. Well, I have two, and then I have my. Oh, my God. Uh, so that's 15, 16. Yeah. 15. I'm glad you're old. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, shit, that is kind of insane. Um, yeah. <laughs> did you get boxcar? I did. I got boxcar. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. All right. Uh, who's going to make the engineering power check? Engineering power plus intellect or education. I think Gregor does that. Right? Yeah, Gregor can do that. Let's see. Dangerous to go alone. Take this. <laughs> Ten. Okay. And then uh, who wants to make the uh, engineering J drive plus intellect or education? You get a plus eight to that. Plus eight. <laughs> <laughs> you can't fail. I can't fail it anything. at all. Yeah. yeah um, it's so enough. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, even if even if you snake eyes that you wouldn't be off course. Yeah, it's eighteen, so yeah, we're good. So eighteen. <laughs> so, so 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 we're within two microns of where we wanted to go. <laughs> so with that with that kind of I mean the astrogation was great. How close are you getting when you when you, so you're I mean, of course you're going from Thieve to the secret refueling depot and then um, from the secret refueling depot, you can jump. You can you can actually jump straight to to Thebes. Yeah, My question maybe. is how how close are you getting to the main world? Are you jumping to the main world? Are you jumping to the gas giant? Are you jumping to the belts? Because you don't you don't have to come in at a static point. You know that's a hundred diameters out. You can you can get try to get as close as you can. So um, I. I... I would think that we would want to be close to the gas giant because that's the most likely place where this uh, um, ship would be if it's trying to be s secretive at all. 
about, uh, refueling. about refueling. Yeah. Um, well, but it, so so it what might you, be on the world. So, so was, what you know uh, about what you know about the uh, princely profiteer is that <laughs> it is it is going to the main world and and oh, landing okay. at the main world to to resupply these Aslan on the ground. So. But um, what you but you don't know, um, I mean, you have a very um, a very basic estimate schedule. So Thebus, uh, right. Thebus being on the the dust belt <laughs> and being one of the major worlds, <clears throat> um, basically the the. Um, it's the gateway to the Dust Belt <clears throat> for ships coming up uh, from Tech World because they're coming through Marduk and Torpal. Um, they're coming up that direction. So they have a huge starport. And this starport is... At, it, it, the, the Thebus didn't build the starport. <clears throat> so Or not starport. Highport. And so they have this huge highport. The highport was actually built by, of course, General Development Company. And then they they sold it to investors, and the investors are called the Thebus. Uh, I think it's just Thebus Highport Corporation. <laughs> and so, <clears throat> all of the traffic goes through the Thebus Highport. Um, there are shuttles. There are shuttles that go down to the to the main world, but very irregularly um th i mean they're they're they they make the trip daily but on a very irregular schedule there's not very many people that go down there one thing that thebus main world is known for is that um it, it passengers that are making their way <clears throat> up from the imperium and heading for the florian league or on their way back there are three things <clears throat> that these wealthy bastards do <clears throat> first on their list is they go hunting on Thebus because they want to bag a Theban lion. And so there are these these lions. They call them Theban lions. They're really a mutation of some kind. And these wealthy jerks go down there and go on a safari hunt. And that's one of the goals is to get a Theban lion pelt. The other one is to bring back a death mask. And I'm trying to find the world there it is up here um bring back a death mask from these guys <clears throat> they have a very as uh aztec type uh culture there and then of course the last item would be bring back a ancient relic from uh the florian league mm -hmm. but so so there are shuttles that go from this high port down to thebus <clears throat> um usually they're taking people on uh, Safari. Now, there is a rule that when you come into the system, you can't go directly to the main world. I mean, you can, but if you do go directly to the main world, you are no longer allowed to dock at Thebus Highport. Hmm. So, um, and, and they tell you that <clears throat> the law states that Thebus Highport is... Um, allowed to uh, conduct customs checks and you know all it's all bullshit is what it is the real reason is because they want the hotels and the bars and whatnot on Thebus Highport don't make any money for people that are going down to the main world now <clears throat> the world itself has a thin atmosphere you can't breathe without a compressor mask um, there is a city around their downport, um, just Thebus City, that the population of that city is about 8,000 people. That is, the, um, that is the registered number of the population of the plant, but that's not exactly true. There are small um, enclaves and villages and whatnot, but like Noricum, <clears throat> Thebus got... The shit blown out of it at the end of the uh, at the end of the civil war of the Sindalian Empire, and so um, I mean that it's bounced back so that these Theban lions, which that mutation is from being bombed like that, um, is remarkable. But nobody's ever bothered to recolonize the world. The high port's more important. 
And so the high port has this this culture where because these you know imperial traffic and uh, trade traffic and whatnot comes in, what they <laughs> what they call uh, party season. And party season is when a big freighter or whatnot docks. And, you know, then all of the bars are going to run specials. All the hotels run specials. And, uh, and they even... Did they double the price? <clears throat> no, they run deals. And see, and so, well, like any high port, you can dock at the high port. And you don't have to get a hotel room. You can, you can sleep on your ship. But what Phoebus High Port has done <clears throat> is they make it more difficult. And it takes more time because every time you get off your ship, you wake up in the morning, you get off your ship, and you want to go do some shopping in the High Port, you have to go through port security again each time. And so while, while that takes place, the hotels are running massive deals and the bars are running massive deals to where it just doesn't make any sense to not just spend your money in the port and get a room. And this is how they funnel money into the into the hotel and food yeah. industry. But the people we're looking for are going to be on planet, right? Yep. But you don't know when, when or if they've come through. I mean, you've got a is there a way to keep watch schedule. for that from the high port? You can dock on the high port. Uh, usually, a ship that has purchased cargo and is carrying passengers. We'll we'll file a flight plan, and that is public information. Hmm. Okay. Okay. So um, you would be able to check for that ship name in the public uh, dock or docking uh, or flight plan. So you guys come out a, a jump into Thebes, and um, of course, so I, so if you're if you're are you are you Aiming for for the the main world then and the high port, so <clears throat> of course. I think so. What about yeah. y'all? Yeah, the high port sounds like a good place to chill while we wait to see. So you guys come out, and of course, uh, I mean, this is there's a lot of traffic here. Uh, there are you know, uh, you know, Galuth mega traders, uh, thirty thousand tons freighters that are. Either there's one that's leaving, one is docked, so there is party town, and there's a lot of ships that are in the in the flight pattern. And of course, like any high traffic high port, you're going to be stuck in in uh, a little bit in traffic until your turn to dock comes up. And of course, over the news um, comes in, uh, you're getting the the local news net, <clears throat> and part of the news uh, is talking about. Um, there's a vitriolic denunciation of rogue merchants who were accused of running weapons to Ihadi on Thebes. Yeehaw! And the source that this woman is uh, is interviewing, there she's obviously down on the surface of Thebes, and she's introduced or she's uh, interviewing this yokel. Um, I think he's probably wearing a red baseball cap. And he's going on and on about <clears throat> how, um, you know, rogue merchants are are um, funneling weapons to to the Aslan on Thebes. And we got to take, we got to do something about that and blah, blah, blah. But everything that he's going on about, <clears throat> there's no proof. He, he, he's pointing fingers at a lot of people. But there's no proof that anybody is actually involved, and <laughs> um, and at the bottom of the screen, as this guy is ranting, it it, it shows her name, and she is interviewing somebody named Anders Grihai. Oh my! It's one of them whacked out fuckheads, man. Uh, I mean, let's it's his brother. <laughs> yeah. Right. So that that immediately draws your attention because. Prince Richter Grihai is the guy who sent you on this this mission. This guy is Anders Grihai. Yeah. Well, Must be cousins. Yeah. Maybe. Or maybe they just like take that last name on. Yeah. When they join the group. 
I mean, you can. <laughs> I don't know. If, uh, anybody who wants to do a little com computer work can can research that on the local data net. What do we roll? Yeah, I'd like to scan and see if I can, uh, you know, see what the fuck is in system. Yeah, go ahead and make an electronics. Uh, electronics. Or, I'm sorry, engine. Ugh. Yes. Engineering electronics plus your choice, either intellect or education. If you want to search the local data net for Anders Grehi, um, <clears throat> make a uh, electronics computer. I got an 11. Okay. Well, okay. I then. got computers plus intellect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Ting got an I, 11. Yeah, I am scanning. Uh... I mean, since since I I guess we'll have our transponder on and we'll leave our Harriers to kind of maybe just Dang float, out. look. Yeah, if they if they spot uh, what the ships on uh, the, the the Dawn Seeker and then that and Principal Profiteer, are the right? Are, for. are the two main ones we're looking for? I guess if it's all right, we'll just have them kind of hanging out around the gas giant or something, okay. seeing if you know. That covers two bases at once, right? Yeah, it does. That's a great idea. Yeah. Yeah. So, and and if they if they are to see either one of them, they are to uh, they are to stop those ships from from working. Those okay. those ships should cease to work and be looted. And so you're you're scanning, um, and Gregor kind of jacks into the local data net, and um, so Ting. <clears throat> In your scan, <clears throat> you pick up a couple of interesting things. So there are um, some uh, Imperial naval ships that are just kind of hanging around. Mm -hmm. um, and like I said, one of the freighters that has docked is a Galoof class uh, mega freighter. And uh, so... Um, your 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 comms line is coming in with a whole shit ton of uh, ads, you know, for uh, you know different hotels, um, uh, casinos. You know, if you stay at the hotel, you automatically get a hundred credits worth of casino credits. Um, there's uh, restaurants that are running deals. Um, there's it, it's it's crazy. You're just getting a ton of pop up ads. Um, so there are a number of, like I said, Imperial ships, um, not anything too big, but you are seeing that there are some escort frigates, things of that nature hanging out. Oh, something good to blow up. Yeah, I, don't... <laughs> I wouldn't blow it up. <laughs> yeah, no, she, yeah. <laughs> she wanted to pull yeah. that much attention to yourself. Um, okay. and Gregor, you, you kind of pop around the um, the data net. <clears throat> and the first thing that you find is that there is nobody by the name in, in all the population of that high port and the population of um, the, the down port. There is nobody with the name of Anders Grehi. That, that person doesn't That's exist. That's interesting. <laughs> Um, but your role was high enough that you do a well, little bit more digging and you find that Anders Grehi um, is a pseudonym that is commonly used by members of the Grehi movement uh, that are acting as a spokesman. <clears throat> oh, okay. So it's more like a rank than a name. Yeah. Kind of, yeah. That's cool. All right. That's good to know. I mean, yeah. So the other thing that Tang picks up, aside from the fact that there's Imperial ships, is that you find that there are a number of Aslan ships. Um, and not, not tiny Aslan ships either. Um, <clears throat> there are a couple of warships that are hanging out. Um, yeah, there's a small, um, a small flotilla. Gee, this just sounds like a really good place not to not to not, not to jack somebody's ship. <laughs> <Right. Yeah. laughs> yeah, can we tell what faction of Aslan they are? Like are they Glorious Empire or they are Harate. 
Uh, they are. Okay. They are. Um, cool. Shit, you're Good gonna ask me for a clan. I, I, they are a hair eight clan. Yeah, that's fine. I don't even know what clan they are. Yeah. I just want to. It wouldn't make, matter. I, I probably wouldn't be able to pronounce it anyway. We're not gonna <laughs> remember it anyway. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> um, are they are they a mercenary type clan? They are not. Okay. Um, but right. they but they are pinging. Um, as a part of, um, now, Aslan don't have nobility. There is the clan head, his first son, and then everybody below that. And, and the people below that don't generally matter a whole lot. But they're pinging that, uh, um, as close as your computer can come up, that this is a minor Aslan noble uh, that goes by the name of Fataqua. All right. And all of these ships belong to him. Hmm. All right, but they are not slavers from the Glorious Empire. So no. that is a no. They are monster. they are hair eight. Um, and no. some of the ships are are merchant vessels. And there's a couple of these ships that are docked at the high port. We should send them a cow horse as a, as a as a gift so they can kill it and eat it raw. <laughs> Here, have a horx on us. <laughs> That's a good way to introduce ourselves if we have to. Yeah, I mean, getting contact and maybe having a nice dinner with the the Tiaquata or whatever. Tiaquata. Yeah, yeah, couldn't couldn't hurt anything. Uh, they might have news on <laughs> on our know. favorite pirate lord. Um, well, I mean, I don't know. Well, I mean, I'm, you are I'm, looking for a ship that is supposedly a rogue merchant that's selling yeah. supplies to a uh, a Hati band on the planet. Oh, okay. So, I mean, I, I mean, if All you right. want to go to the you know the the literal cat's mouth. Yeah, you know, they yeah. supposedly wrecked on the planet, though. I mean, you heard something about an e haunty ship was wrecked on the planet. Yes, we yeah. should. We need to look through all the public flight plans and look for our ships and also for anything that might have wrecked on the planet. Uh, who wants to make a electronics comms plus intellect or education check? I think that's my thing. Yeah, for sure. I don't yeah. do comms. Oh, yeah, I love to talk. I mean, I got comm zero. <laughs> uh, I got a 10, so... So, I mean, comms is not just breaking through communications. It's also sifting through news feeds, mm -hmm. um, a lot of it. And so, <clears throat> you are basically bringing up the different uh, local news net, <clears throat> and you do find, uh, again, the same guy, Anders Grehi, um, going on about um, how <clears throat> um, he and his friends are uh, protecting uh, Thebes from, and of course he, he talks like this because he's wearing a filter mask. He, he's wearing a compressor mask, and he's going on and on about how he and his his friends, the Grehi movement, are protecting Thebes. <laughs> They shot down an is uh, a Ihati Aslan scout ship uh, with a surface to air, a shoulder mounted surface to air missile. Dang, hey, that's a hell of a, a roll. Man pad. Oh my God, he's still got a man pad. <laughs> Basically, they shot down a scout ship with an RPG. Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, no. Yeah. SA7. I guess I guess we're gonna go dock with the high port then, right? So yeah, they the the comms come alive, uh, and basically your number comes up, and they they give you uh, your you can dock at docking uh, docking bay fifty one. Uh, Beth, go ahead and make a piloting plus dex check. It's a routine check. Well, we're good. Nice, you make that look easy. So you pull. This is a pretty fancy port. Um, you, you've been at ports, uh, built by general development before, and they're always, um, fairly nice. Um, this is a class B starport. 
uh, or or high port. And so, but it's big. Um, you can actually, instead of docking to the outside, you can pull in. The larger ships have to dock uh, to external mounts, but you come in and you are actually in an enclosed um, space and you pull up and you dock on uh, pad 51. Um, what what are you guys doing? Now, what, there is... What a... can we wear in this place? What's the tech level? Uh, the law level? Law level is... I mean, law level. That's a really good question. Can awesome. I wear my... Can I wear my battle dress with my Probably laser pistol? Probably not. <laughs> uh, what so it is in small subsector, and it says that Phoebus, law level seven. So, meh. let's see, law level seven means. Shotguns are banned. Anything lower than that is banned. And pistols. You can wear mesh armor. Oh, I've got mesh. Can I wear my ballistic vest? So all firearms. Uh, including shotguns. You Our can carry band. a stunner. I can carry. Okay, I got. I just bought a stunner. And you can carry my bladed weapons. Uh, you can wear mesh armor, or no, you cannot wear mesh armor. Uh, mesh, cloth, flak, combat armor, and battle dress is banned. How about ballistic vest? Yeah, you could wear a ballistic vest. And jacket? Yeah. I'm just going to wear my Diplo vest. and You can do that. Nice. Ballistic vest is the closest thing to Diplo I've got. With my stunner. Is can I bring gambling? my body pistol? Gambling, is that what you said? Personal yeah. concealable weapons are banned, but, I mean, it is a body pistol, so they have to get a 14-plus on their scanners in order to detect it. If they do, okay. you'll have some splaining to do. <laughs> right. Well, that's what the prognosis are for. <laughs> and those, you can carry those. Brass knuckles, garrot. Yeah, nobody's I'm not too about worried about... Wire. I'm not too worried about violence breaking out on here. We're like waiting around for the ship. Stutter. Okay. So, yeah, you guys, uh, so the, of course the first thing <clears throat> um, is that uh, uh, there is basically a uh, maintenance and space worthiness check, which essentially it, it takes about five minutes. The, the, the port authority's got plenty of shit to do. Um, it, he looks over your maintenance logs. There's like a five minute walk through of your ship, and he says, "Yep, looks good to me. Looks like you just got this maintenance." This is, yep. this is a nice, nice ship, nice ship, and uh, that is your maintenance check. Um, docking fees and that's a... three million credits a day. No, I don't think it's that much. I don't pay. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I gotta try my claws out. <laughs> I'm just grabbing onto the, the headphones cable. Uh, let's see here. I want to, and I want to do. Uh, so he's gonna he's gonna be a chewer on cables. He's been pretty good so far. Yes, Eve. We're talking about cats. Did you hear? <laughs> Well, I'm just going to roll. And... So your docking fees are going to be a thousand credits. Okay. That's oh, shit. Yeah. 
Re we can stay. We can stay here thirty years. Uh, refueling, <laughs> refueling fee will be another four hundred credits. Okay. So fourteen hundred total. Well, so I guess we need to check and see if this ship has come through here or not. That All sounds right. like a reasonable idea. Yeah. So public record search. On, uh, so which one are you looking for first? <clears throat> we want the, the prize as our first priority. Isn't the it? principal profiteer? I think sure. So. Go ahead and make a yeah. computer, uh, electronics, computers, plus intellect or education. I think that's greater. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Greater can do it. 12. Nice. nice. So you pull up information. That's my master's degree in computer science showing. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so you pull up uh, that the principal profiteer doesn't appear to have been through Thebus Highport or Downport for several years. Um, now, that doesn't mean that it hasn't gone planet side without entering the port. That's just the port, either the Highport or Downport's records is not listing that it is coming through. So it could have just landed on its own. Possibly, yes. Now, you do know that if it did that, it wouldn't be allowed to come back to the, to the high port. But according Would to that Phoebus be documented law, in the computer? Uh, no. And, and the reason it wouldn't be documented in the computer is because <laughs> when that happens, the high port figures, oh, well, they're not allowed to come back to the high port, so they're no longer our problem, is how high port authority looks at that. All right. You know, we can't make money off of them, so we're just going to ignore them. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. But with your 12, <clears throat> you kind of dig through uh, the public record, and... Um, you do find a couple of local data net entries uh, that record an encounter with Principal Profiteer and the port's defensive craft about a year ago. A couple of fighters were sent to investigate an unidentified vessel approaching Phoebus on an unusual vector, eyeballed uh, the far trader, and they made contact with the crew, but no further action was taken. The far trader was not in distress and did not intend to enter the controlled zone around the port so the fighters broke off and returned to base. That's interesting. I'd like to record that they... vector and, and we could go camp around that. That's a good idea. They Did could you... have a they could have a place to just dropping stuff off for the locals to pick up. Yeah. Did you also want to search for Dawn Seeker? <clears throat> Yes, uh, yeah, yeah, that's, that's another objective. So Gregor can make another computers plus intellect or education check. And I get another 12. Okay. Nice. So Dawn Seeker has passed through Thebus on various occasions, usually several months apart. Uh, her last visit was just a few weeks ago. Um, there's not much more information on the public record, but <clears throat> you can cross you cross reference the available data with trade and maintenance logs, <clears throat> and you find that Dawn Seeker did not buy or sell any cargo at Thebus uh, at Thebus, other than in quotes minor incidentals. <clears throat> How about fuel? Um, it did purchase fuel, and it is noted in the engineering logs that it purchased more fuel than is usually used for a subsidized merchant. It's put on a big jump. Yeah. Now, the other thing, uh, everybody can roll a... Uh, roll a D6 plus your intellect modifier. Or roll 2D6 plus your intellect modifier. 11. 12. 12. 8. So all of you got it. Um, you know minor incidentals uh, usually refers to small items sold by the crew rather than cargo. 
but it can also mean spares and components uh, surplus to the ship's needs. So you guys, being experienced pirates, uh, know that pirates and smugglers will be aware that some kinds of cargo can be broken up and sold, uh, with the total sold being underreported. So it's possible uh, that Dawn Seeker's crew disposed of, proceeding, of proceeds like they raided somebody and then uh, broke up that cargo into minor incidentals and sold it that way. Rather than like what you did at Thieve where you sold, you know, 50 tons of industrial robots, they might have broken it up and said, oh, well, we're going to sell one robot at a time. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So they seem pretty professional. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Unfortunately. What was yeah, I thing? think. Oh, I'm sorry. I was going to say, what was the thing that we were going to monitor that you brought up a minute ago? And the vector. Uh, so, yeah, the vector that that uh, the ship was headed in, where the defense yeah. fighters headed up. So you, yeah, I would like to. You you don't they don't have a vector uh, uh, the, because they didn't stick around. The fighters didn't uh, pick up a vector of, of where it was heading to the planet's surface. Um, but you know you know what their approach was. You know what continent. You know what their approach was. Well, yeah, let's go. Let yeah, I, I think we ought to. Let me see if I brought it. We go on a scanning expedition. Yeah, is there a, is there a fee we can okay. pay to the uh, to, to the authorities here to you know still stay in their good graces and go on a scanning expedition of the planet? I'm sorry. What was your question? Is there uh, a nominal fee that we can pay the high port people or whatever so we can go scan into the planet with our ship? Oh, but stay in good graces now, now that you've docked at the high port, you're you're free to go down to the planet as, as, if you want, and you can come back to the to the high port anytime you want. As you are, you're kind of standing around this public uh, kiosk terminal, uh, looking this information up, and. Uh, Keith, uh, a a fairly gentle furred hand taps you on the shoulder. Oh, um, so I'll turn around and <laughs> so there is keep my pants. <laughs> <laughs> there is this female Aslan standing there, and huh. and she is says, she pretty? <laughs> well, I mean, she's she's a cat. Uh, yeah, what? <laughs> she's a cat. Um, she. She um she taps Keith on the shoulder and she turns and, and when you turn I prefer around, calicos anyway. Um, she's she kind of bows to you and she says, uh, um, um, in very broken Galanglic, she says, "Honored sir, uh, I I couldn't help but notice." Uh, and I and I didn't mean to to be eavesdropping, but I looked over your shoulder um, that you that you were looking up um, um, information about uh, the principled profiteer, and I thought perhaps that you might be able to to help uh, to help us. Um, I, I would, I'm interested. What what could we do to help you? She says, "Well, um, my my lord, uh, lord uh, Lord Fataqua, is um, seeking um, seeking a a group of people that may be able to help him with a delicate matter." Hmm. We're delicate. We can handle a delicate matter, definitely. Yes. Um. <laughs> yeah, we've done it so sure. many times before. Yeah. <laughs> Does he have to roll for deception? How so, about the visit section? Um, she she says um, uh, she she pulls out a uh, Aslan style mobile com and she she sends you a, a conference room number. And she says, uh, Lord Fataqua is holding court uh, in this uh, conference room. If you could meet us there at uh, th uh, uh, 
0300 local time, um, I'm sure that uh, that he would be able to give you more information. I can't speak about this um, openly. Oh, um, so I'm going to relay this information to the captain. All right. Um, so how long do we have before three? Uh, it, like maybe uh, 45 minutes. Oh, oh wow. Sure. And, and she she also time. makes a point. She says, and, and if if you would like, you can show up earlier. Um, that is your invitation to to attend court. And uh, refreshments and, and food will be served. Well, that's nice. Oh, how, how sushi. Thank you. you can have sushi. <laughs> Well, I mean, it's an Aslan court, so you might have to catch it first. But mm, that's true, <laughs> and it won't be, and it won't be cooked. <laughs> they prefer it raw, don't they? Usually, and, yeah. Does yeah. anybody or, have anything they want to do in, within forty-five minutes before we? Because I don't have anything else I want to do. No, I'm, I'm kind of done. I figure we go do this meeting, and then I'd like to jump back in the Osiris and go hunt down this fucking ship. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you guys make it over to this um to this conference room and as you approach the area, so there you know, like any you know, hotel, there are a number of um business class like uh suites around the conference room. This entire area of like twenty rooms has been sequestered off and there are yeah. armed aslan guards posted and as you you the first as you enter the area the first one checks your your mobile comm checks your invitation and he points down the hall and says that way humans and you go into this large um conference room and the conference room has basically been taken over and modified to be almost like a royal court. There are, um, there is this, fe the female Aslan that invited you um, is basically announcing people that, uh, that can meet with Fatakwa and they, they approach and he's sitting at the far end of this conference room on a pile of overstuffed pillows. And, you know, they, they talk. Around, further back from this, there are tables of all sorts of, of expensive foods. Like, there, there, a lot of it has been imported. There are, um, there are people come, there are waiters humans that work for the hotel coming around serving champagne and wine there's an open bar and uh eat as much as you want drink as much as you want and there are a bunch of people well everybody make a um y your choice either streetwise or carouse plus social check <clears throat> Ten. Seven. Not so good. Uh, I got eight. I got seven. <clears throat> so you all made it, mm. and you, the the feeling that you get um, with a lot of these people that are standing around eating and drinking um, is that they were invited to stand around and eat and drink. <laughs> Their entire reason for being there is to make Fatakwa look more important than he really is. All right, I can roll. With I it. mean, and as you mingle among these people, there, there's some of these people like, oh my god, and that's great, free food, and they, they just they have no idea why they're there. And finally, wow. finally, your <laughs> the the Aslan female um, announces uh, uh, she announces Keith because she's the only one that she's really talked to. And she um, she announces him as Sir Keith. Oh, nice! Um, they know we're knights. Yeah, I guess so. 
That's cool. I was never knighted officially, was I? Oh, no, I was. Yeah, no, right. You no, was. The first right. got us all knighted. My prince, that's right. I forgot about that. So you guys kind of approach, and um, and Fatakwa is <clears throat> kind of sitting there, um, you know, being a fat cat. Um, everybody can make, uh, make a... Hmm. Make it just roll 2d6 and add your social score to it. Or no, if you you can you can make a streetwise plus uh plus social check. Then I got a nine. Seven. And six. Ten. So Gregor, you know um that you now that you see this guy and how this whole situation is <laughs> is kind of going down that he's you know he's basically purchased all of these rooms around the he's basically turned this section of the hotel into his private castle um you it dawns on you that you've heard about this guy he's kind of notorious in in multiple ports across the dust belt um pretty much for this sort of behavior um that he um he tends to portray himself as being much more important than he really is mm. um he he's obviously wealthy uh but yeah. but he's he's not quite as big of a big shot i mean at, at least among aslan clans he's not as big of a big shot as he pretends to be um, but as you guys approach, and Gregor knows this, he probably, you know, standing in front of him, I don't know if Gregor's going to say, hey, this guy's a nobody. <laughs> so, hey, this guy's a nobody, Captain. <laughs> <laughs> Announce it loudly in front of everyone. Yes. So, Fatakwa. Us, um, us Scots don't care. So, <laughs> as, as you approach, Fatakwa. Uh, says yes, yes. You you probably know who I am. Uh, my name, my reputation precedes me. Says, well, so, what have you done? Said, <laughs> great victories, great victories. But oh. but it's this isn't about me. Oh, he says. Like all Aslan, I intend to pass my lands and titles and my vast fortunes to my eldest son generally among aslan males that would mean i don't know how much you know about aslan males but that would mean that my other sons and my daughters get nothing welcome that's the general <laughs> aslan <laughs> attitude <laughs> just, just, the reality is is that's not really the whole truth the reality is, is that my younger sons may not directly inherit my fortunes or any of my lands, but that doesn't mean that I I won't be helping them. I'm quite happy to furnish them with the means to make their own way. Such is the case as I have done with my second son, Fatatius. I gave him a transport ship, a, ship, a crate full of weaponry, and enough uh, cash so that he could gather fellow Ihati to follow him. And he proclaimed to me that he was going to grab himself his own fortune. He was going to reach out his claw and take it. Plunder, land grabbing, even if he had to do trade. They were all options on the table. I was greatly impressed with my second son. I'm just going to be eating a lot while I listen. He says, naturally, I announced this uh, to a large group uh, of fellow clansmen. Well, Fatatius uh, made the announcement that he was going to grab a huge expanse of land from someone capable of putting up a decent fight, and he set off to do it. His Usually, this is followed by an annexation of, uh, be, let's be honest, some worthless swamp or a failed expedition to some 
garbage planet. But no, uh, he uh, he told me it was going to be a worthy endeavor. And of course, as being a proud father, I boasted of this. But then Fatatius's expedition went quiet. We didn't hear from him. I grew concerned for my second son. So I have tracked him to Thebes, and I have learned that his ship was shot down by some locals and crashed on the planet's surface. Mm -hmm. This is a delicate matter. I can't I can't allow this to to get out that <clears throat> after all the boasting that I did, I can't allow other clan members to know that my son was shot down by a shoulder-mounted rocket launcher and that his his endeavor ended in such inglorious defeat. I also can't allow them to know that I am offering to hire you to go rescue my son. Well, it's, really out, it's really far out of our way, but we'll consider doing it for the right price. Well, I, I have a couple of things to offer you. The first being that I can offer you um, a trade credit. The trade credit is a 5% discount. Uh, on on trade to a total value of ten thousand. So essentially, ten thousand what? Ten thousand credits. So essentially, what that means, if you do any trade with Aslan, you say that you buy twenty thousand dollars or twenty thousand credits worth of stuff, you get a five percent discount, so one thousand credits. And once you have received discounts up to ten thousand credits, then then that that trade credit is used up. Oh, okay. There's that. Really good coupon, he huh? says, in addition to that, I'm willing to pay each of you 50,000 credits, um, and I will double that if you bring back Fatatius uh, alive and, and hopefully in good good health. And I'll double it again if you can recover his ship. All right. When you so, per person. Yeah. Uh, now that's everybody on our crew? Uh, well, you four. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Well, he, he says, well, how, how many people are you planning planning to take with you on this endeavor? Well, we have uh, 24 Marines and <laughs> we, we have we have we have a you know, we're, we're just not some small little space jump, jumpies. We are we are knights of of the Sindalian Empire. Go ahead and make a go ahead and make a broker uh a broker plus social check. All right. It is it is your it is your feeling that that Fataqua knows exactly who you guys are. Well, I got an eleven. He says, um He says, well, you drive a hard bargain, but I understand from from what I have learned that you seem to be worth every penny, and my son is worth that. If you can keep this quiet, then and you can promise me that your crew uh, will not be um, loose lipped about it. Then yes, I can I can afford to pay that same rate to everybody that you to your entire crew. Wow! Oh, that sounds like a wonderful idea, and uh, yeah, well, you're you're definitely gonna make my guys happy. <laughs> he says, "I I'm just I'm deeply concerned. I, I mean, there there's this whole situation with the Gree High movement down there. I fear they may have already killed my son." Well, uh. Do you know how dishonorable that would be? No, we can I'm make not it look sure. like he died in, in in a better condition if we find him dead. We can we can clean his death up for you. Yeah. I am a I am a I'm an excellent videographer. I can work <laughs> it up. I, I don't know if you've seen my work out about or not, but he can die in a glorious battle. 
killing yeah. hundreds of enemies. You guys, he might still be alive. Let's not. Well, we we can change that too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but if he's alive and you recover the ship, that's two hundred thousand credits each. That's pretty yeah. great. Let's let's hey, that's for a something good... that you're already going yeah. you're already going to be going down to the planet surface anyways, right? So yeah. right, yeah, probably. So yeah, sure, sounds great. Okay, so uh, we will pick this up next week. Oh. Uh, at 7 o'clock on Wednesday night uh, with uh, you guys uh, planning to go down to the down port on Thebes and uh, um, doing whatever it is you're going to do. All right. Awesome. Feel better, uh, everybody. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah, I'm working on it. That was fun. All right. So, have a good night, guys. Bye.